it's like six o'clock at night because I went to the gym and then it took me like two hours to get home thanks to Atlanta traffic. So gym outfit capri is what you're gonna get today. <laughs> Hello, 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 booktubing world. It's I, Capri Nicole, and I'm back with another video. So this video is super, super, super well overdue. I, like, planned this video mid-year, and it, like, spiraled me into, like, a reading slump, and then I never planned it, and it just, like, kind of fell off to the side. So the video that I'm going to be doing today is the popular books that I read. Now, this was a bad idea for many reasons. Number one, I'm a mood reader. Me forcing myself to have a TBR or have books set before my mood is set was a bad idea okay it turned into like a two month spiraling reading slump so i won't be doing this again but i have 10 books here i actually added one on because i don't know why but for some reason i only had nine books and that was driving me crazy so i have 10 books I'll try not to make it too long so i can take a shower and eat some food because it's like six o'clock at night we're gonna talk about this book first. Girls Made of Paper and Fire. But being that I have all these new subscribers, I feel like I need to throw this out here. If I talk about one of your books that's a fave, granted because this is a, a very hype book in the book community. If I talk about one of your books that's a fave, it is nothing against you. It's nothing against your reading style. I don't give a shit what you read. I really don't care. I'm just gonna talk about my personal reading experience with said book. So try not to take it to heart. Just don't look at the clutter that's accumulated here. Focus on, focus on me. So, Girls Made of Paper and Fire follows our MC, whose name is Lee, and she lives in a fantasy world where the structure of the society is separated by three different clans. We have the Moon Clan, which is predominantly only like demonic characters, and then you have the Paper Clan, which is 100% human, and then you have the Steel Clan, which is half human half demon so everybody in the society is split up by those three classes and the paper class which is the humans is seen as the lowest class and that is the class that our mc is in so also within this fantasy world there are paper girls there's eight of them they serve the king which pretty much means they do whatever he wants and everybody sees it as this high honor and lee does not she doesn't want any parts of that she's living a very humble life working with her father and her friend and they just they're poor, but she's she's good where she's at. So the king and his minions all come all the way down to get her, and she ends up going and having to serve the king. Off the bat, she really doesn't want to do it, but when she gets there, she already sparks attention because usually there's only eight paper girls, and with her, there's nine. And based off of her looks and just the way that her eyes are, they're really bright orange. Everybody's drawn to wondering who she is or completely hating her. As soon as she goes into the kingdom and along the way, she ends up falling in love with another character. That's pretty much the gist of this book. Okay, so let's talk about the things that I liked about this book. The things that I liked about this book was the pacing. I liked the cultural aspects and historical myths that were spread out through the book. The writing style was absolutely amazing. You can tell this author is going to be a really good writer. She has a beautiful way of writing things. I liked the fact that they didn't pair the MC off with the, the king. You know how they do that thing? Oh, the, the king is misunderstood. Let's put, her with the, put him with the MC. They didn't do that for this book, which I really appreciated. I like the cover. What else was there? <laughs> Okay, so another thing about me as far as like reading, I'm a very character driven reader. So if I don't like the characters, I'm not gonna like the book. And I did not like any of the characters in this book. I felt like the MC, she really aggravated me. She put herself in situations that was just, it didn't make any sense. And she didn't find her way out of the situations logically. Nothing she did made sense to me. <sighs> a lot of the characters in this book were very one dimensional. They had like the love interest in this book she had the most interesting backstory that i was like okay we might be getting somewhere but she was just so dry to me like she had no character and there was an insta love thing it was like the weird thing about this book is like it was insta love but it was so damn slow like they didn't have that many moments together to where you actually got to see her fall in love with the other character like it was just like slow 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 training training slow 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 and then bam they were in love i also didn't like the way that the king was depicted like i felt like i should have hated him more like granted he was a shitty person because he took girls against his against their will and had them doing shit they did not want to do shitty person naturally but like you know that feeling you feel when it comes to like the villain you don't like them you genuinely don't like them 
I did not feel that with him. But I wanted to know more about him to equally hate him along with the MC because the MC just like straight off the back hated him. And obviously she's being put in a situation where she should hate him. But like, girl, I want to hate him too. Like if he's the villain, I need to know like why I needed more character development. I needed more... So I gave this book three stars. It wasn't a bad, like the book wasn't bad, but it just, for me personally, I don't think it was worth the hype. I think that it had potential, but the way everybody was flailing about in the book community over this book, I genuinely don't get it. And I think it's a debut book for her, but as I said, her writing is really, really well done. I feel like she has potential, but for me, I don't think all the craziness that was surrounding this book was really worth it. I gave it three stars. I'm wondering if the second book will be better, but I don't know if I'm going to commit to that, so we're going to move right along. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is another booktube favorite, obviously because it's a popularity type video of popular books. Red, White, and Royal Blue. This book follows our MC, whose name is Alex, and he's the son of the President of the United States, who is a female, by the way. He's constantly in the public eye, he's constantly being picked apart, who he likes, who he doesn't like is always being viewed and somebody that he does not like is Prince Henry at all. They don't like each other, they have not liked each other since they were children, they just do not get along. A situation arises where they're kind of forced to be friends, you got the fake friendship trope going on, they have to pretend that they're always hanging out together and they don't just pretend, they really do hang out with each other and being that they do not like each other, it's a very interesting ride. I love this book. <laughs> I was a little nervous because like anytime you go into a book that's really popular you get a little bit nervous because it's like is it worth the hype and sometimes even after you read it you realize it was not worth the hype. So I was a little bit worried because starting the book I was not into it like I was literally like 50 pages in and I was getting so aggravated because I just feel like within the first 100 pages there were so many characters being introduced and their personalities were all so like extra and over the top and specific and the author was trying so hard to show me what each character was and who they were and what their place was and and it just was a lot and I was trying to remember who was who not get aggravated by all the characters some of them I felt like were extremely pointless and so I didn't really get into this book until like 82 pages in I remember texting one of my friends and I was like I'm not feeling it. What do I, I'm panicking, what do I do? But the book actually ended up being really, really, really good. So I'll talk about things that I liked first. I loved the representation in this book. I love that there was a female president. I love that the MC was bisexual. It talked a lot about his coming out and him understanding who he is as a person and just him discovering that on his own. I loved the politics in this. Like, I've never read a book that had like a lot of political aspect that's drawn into it. Your girl steers into the fictional department because we want to stay life away from real life situations so a lot of the books that I read have nothing to do with politics unless it's like a fantasy book and then that's like not even real politics it's a fantasy world I love the friendship in this book I love the family aspect in this book she was a divorcee like they really showed how life changed after her and her husband got divorced and there was also a little small portions that show like the cultural aspect because the MC is Spanish he's also biracial that up that was just like it just shined the light on like Spanish culture and I just loved it like I really like both of the characters like the MCs like Alex and Prince Henry I loved both of them like sometimes characters that are really stuck up aggravate the shit out of me and I was a little bit worried about that with Prince Henry because obviously he's royalty so I'm like what you gonna be like brother you gonna be approved or you gonna be interested but he was so interesting he was really complex and I just oh, I loved him he was such like a little geek too it was just, oh, just, I loved him I loved him I loved Alex I loved both of their best friends I loved his sister in today's climate this book is extremely relevant and you can just feel like the author feels the same way because you can feel like the political pull that's constantly like drip dropped into each chapter and it was like so well done I cried reading this book there were just so many like sweet moments and I really liked that they were emailing back and forth like it's just I just the list could go on and on and on but I absolutely love this book I gave it five stars I think the only thing I didn't like about this book was the fact that I never un quite understood the relationship between the ex the best friend the sister and then Henry's best friend. I felt like they all were flirting with each other. They all were, I, I don't know what the hell was going on. I didn't understand any of, of that, but I just focused on Henry and Alex because they were the MCs, and it just was a great time. 
Is it worth the hype? The answer is yes. Okay, so the next book that I'm going to talk about, I don't have a physical copy of. I listened to it on audiobook, and I think I listened to this during Sailor Moonathon because I was trying to get them page counts up, okay? We was getting burnt. Radio Silence follows the MC, Francis, who is a <sighs> sprouting young adult who's about to step into the real world of like college, jobs, finances, all that. She's on her last year in high school and she pretty much has like a plan as we always do but as we all know all my adults out there we already know plans don't always go to the damn plan but she has like an outlet like everybody has a creative outlet where they need to breathe for a damn second and not deal with life and for her it's this show on youtube that's called university it's kind of like a podcast and she just like draws along with it and lo and behold she ends up meeting the creator of the show and they become end up becoming really really good friends i love this book so much because i feel like this is a book too baby too like i feel like people talk about this book a lot it finally showed a healthy friendship not 100 percent healthy because they all they had their issues on the side but a healthy friendship where they don't fall in love and then you have other kids that are in high school as well that are just really trying to figure it out everybody's trying to figure out what the hell they're doing and it was so sad but it was good and I feel like the high school characters in this book were really well depicted I feel like sometimes when older authors write high school kids you can feel them writing the high school kids and it does not make sense it just it just don't fit the slang don't fit the characters don't fit they always feel either too old or way too young or them trying to be hit or whatever is going on this was like perfectly done pretty much just deals a lot with like mental health dealing with toxic situations becoming a young adult college life just figuring out your path the characters in this book all had their own thing going on but they all came together and helped each other and i really really appreciated that your girl cried again what's new honestly books it takes a lot for me to cry from books but these a lot of these books made me cry and i really want to reread this so bad but i want to get the physical copy so is this book worth the hype yes i gave it five stars so okay move my big ass head the next book that i'm gonna talk about is a curse of dark and lonely and this book is a beauty and the beast retelling which follows our mc by the name of harper who lives in washington dc so she ends up getting pulled into a magical world where everything is pretty much in an apocalyptic state because there's a beast that's terrorizing the lands and the beast is the prince his name is ren you already know how this goes everybody knows how beauty and the beast is so the verdict is i loved this book okay i love this book I, straight off the bat like as soon as i started this book i was like sucked into the world like it's been a while since i've been sucked in to a magical fantasy world but this one did it for me and it's I just think that retellings are always so well done like every time an author takes a spin on a oldie but a goodie it's always good like I have not read a bad retelling yet honestly I have not things that I loved about this book I love the disability rep so the MC Harper she has cyberplasty and she has to constantly deal with her body being in pain there is a booktuber who I will actually link below who has cyberplasty and she loved this book I watched her review and seeing her review on this book is what made me pick this up as well aside from it being extremely popular but just seeing how emotionally connected she was to this book and how appreciative she was of the representation in this book I really 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 loved her review so I'll link it below if you want to check it out but like this one the Enchantress, she she put her foot in it. She put her foot in the magic. Speaking of the Enchantress, she was so well done. Like, she was off the page. There weren't that many scenes with her in it, but I hated her ass. Like, she was a villain that was really well done. She really made you hate her, but I appreciated the fact that I hated her. I also loved the friendship dynamic between Ren and his royal guard, Grey. I loved Grey so much. Grey reminded me a lot of Kale in the Throne of Glass series in the beginning, like the start of the series. Grey reminded me of Kale in the earlier days. Like he's really loyal, he's very selfless, he's kind of closed off, but like he has like these little small moments where you see another side of him. Like, and especially with that ending, I know that second book is just gonna bring it on home i really loved how he treated harper and it kind of felt like there was a little bit of a love triangle going on there but i honestly think that 
both of the MCs just appreciated her in, in different ways. Ren was pretty much closing himself off from everybody in the community to protect them and to hide the fact that his ass is a beast, but he kind of abandoned his people. So when Harper came there, she was like, uh-uh, we not doing that. She was not having it. So she set foot to try to make a plan with making him connect with his people and do something for them so that they're just not starving to death and dying. I loved how strong each character was individually and together. I loved the little moments that Ren and Harper had. It was a, a huge slow burn, but it was just so cute. It was so cute. I love the battle scenes. Just, this book was great. Was it worth the hype? Yes. I gave it five stars, so great. Okay, so the next book that I'm gonna talk about is Aurora Rising. Follows the MC by the name of Tyler Jones. So Tyler Jones is like top of his class. Everybody looks up to him. They know he's going to be a great leader until he randomly goes on this mission that nobody told him to go on and he ends up finding this girl that is trapped in the fold which is like the in-between of two different worlds because it's set in space. So he finds this girl that's trapped in the fold and he rescues her and she comes back to life at the raw age of 200. Okay and because he did this mission he ends up missing the ceremony where he gets to graduate and pick who is going to be on his team. So he misses that ceremony, so when he gets back, he's left with the scraps, okay? All the misfits, the people that nobody wanted, that's his team now, because he wanted to be extra. So it follows them and this random girl he rescued, and they're set off into their first mission. They think it's gonna be extremely boring, they think it's not gonna be fun, but as they go on to their mission, they find out that it's way more complicated than they thought it was. They find out secrets about politics, and they just end up in a whole bunch of mess and chaos and disaster. So let's talk about things I liked about this book, which is, that list is very short. <laughs> first thing that I wanna say is I love the cover. See, the cover is really pretty love that and i really like the beginning of the story it alternated between like the past and the present but the way that they mixed it together the wording of a sentence would stop and then it would start into a new sentence which would be the past like i just thought that flow was really smooth like within those first like 10 pages i really liked it and i felt like it was gonna be safe i was wrong i hated this book <laughs> i hated this book so much like i that's the thing, like, I've read Jay's books before, and I think his writing is good, but this is the second book that I've read where he's co-written with Amy Kaufman, and I just don't like it. So I don't know if it's, like, I don't like sci-fi or I don't like the way that they write together. And this book took me forever to read, and I ended up going into reading something for, like, almost two weeks, and then I picked up the audiobook because I'm like, uh-uh, we finishing this, okay? We already started. 25% into the book... I completely gave up. I really did not care about anything that was happening. And then the further along we went, I really just stopped caring because as I said, I'm a character driven reader and I did not care about any of the characters. The only thing I felt toward all these characters was aggravation because they just, they were so corny. Like they had these corny ass lines. Like they all had these like, it just felt like they all were given these personalities and instead of them just being themselves and me being like oh, okay well i know what kind of character he is it was like shoved down my throat that tyler was like the attractive amazing leader with this dimple they kept talking about the damn dimple they kept talking about how assertive he is and how attractive he is and then the sister was just like this woman that just dated whoever she wanted and she did whatever she want and it just that was so overdone and then you had the dude that I really liked the disability rep because there was a character that was in a wheelchair. Appreciated that. But then you had him cracking on these corny ass jokes. I was just like, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. And then there were so many parts where I was just like, what is going on? But like things were going on and I did not care. Like I just wanted to be done with this book. I wanted to be done. I just couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I don't want to talk too much about this book because I don't want it to turn into a rant, but I just remember my aggravation reading this book. I could not finish this damn book fast enough. I remember listening to the audiobook while I was driving and pulling over so that I could annotate this book because I was just like, I need to remember how hard I cringed at this quote. And was it worth the hype? Absolutely damn not. I think because the cover is pretty and the authors have already written a really well-known hyped book before, so everybody was just eating this up like cookies and it really wasn't all that it was not worth the hype 
I gave it one star. I think this is the only book that I've ever given one star. This book, one star. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is The Unhoneymooners. So this book was really, really hyped in the start of the year, which is when I started this video. So this book follows the MC who is a twin. The twins are Olive and Amy, and Olive is our MC who has the worst luck. She, nothing goes right for her. Everything's always going terribly wrong. And her sister, the twin, is the exact opposite. Everything always goes right for her. She has the best luck. She ends up getting married and her wedding ceremony is damn near free. The food, the buffet, everything is damn near free. But you know what? You get what you pay for, okay? So the buffet that she got that was free, everybody up in the wedding got food poisoning, all right? So everybody was thrown up, projectile vomit happening all over the place. But you know who didn't get sick? Olive, okay? Because she didn't eat that. She didn't eat it. And because the bride and the groom were just like chomping on down on that poison uh, seafood they had going on there, she's not able to go to her honeymoon but because it was free and she worked so hard to get it she does not want to just like give it up so she decides to give it to her sister who because she's a twin twin rights okay she gets to go for free but she needs a husband okay you can't say you just got married and show up there without your husband all right the person that ends up playing her husband is her arch enemy which is the best friend of husband this book I really really love this book I love so many things about this book I feel like this book was the first book that I read that was like a hate to love trope that I felt was a hate to love with these characters I just felt the aggravation they have for each other and then I felt when it slowly started melting away I really really like Olive like I really like her she's really sassy I just loved her as an MC. I like the fact that they were both older characters. I think they were in their 30s. I just really appreciate books that have like romances that are like over the age of 25 because like everybody don't find the love of their life at like 16 to 25, okay? If you do, that's great, but everybody don't, all right? So when I have like a 30 year old character up in there that's getting a little love, love it. Honestly, this book had me dying. There were so many parts that oh, I just remember. I remember all of the banter between both of them hilarious i liked how driven she was she was a very hard worker i liked both of them i just felt like they both were really interesting characters ethan was a little bit one-dimensional at times he was like a little hidden like he had little hidden parts of him that i liked the only thing i did not like about this book was the ending like the ending if anybody's read this book i'm not gonna spoil it i'm not gonna go into depths about it but the ending was like chaotic there was like okay you just felt like okay things are going fine and then all of a sudden last 100 pages just shit was going wrong left and right and then you had all this other side drama going on that really just I couldn't deal without that it just was a lot and then it just like kind of aggravated me because Ethan's reaction to the situations that were happening kind of annoyed the shit out of me so I ended up docking it a star but all in all I think it was worth the hype I gave it four stars so the next book that I'm going to talk about is Daisy Jones and the Six. So this book follows the MC by the name of Daisy and the six members within the band and it follows their journey into becoming musicians separately and together and just like how they dealt with being in the limelight of making music and how they tried to make it and just like the entire journey and then it shows the after effects once they break up and just the entire story of them being a group. I love this book. <laughs> I actually started reading it physically, but I listened to a majority of it on audiobook, and the audiobook is really, really well done. But I think it also confused me because the voices were really similar, and especially with the fact that there were so many members, I didn't know who the hell was talking, and it took me a while to try to remember which member was which. This book has a lot of drugs, broken relationship, love, a lot of hate, a lot of anger, jealousy, like it just was a very in-depth book about the life of a musician. Addiction is really heavy in this book, but I just think that this author has found her niche. Like she's been writing for a very long time, but she's so good at making characters feel real. Like it just feels like she's writing a memoir. And a lot of people compare this book and say like Daisy Jones is like the knockoff version of Evelyn Hugo, but I honestly don't see that. I think that they're two completely different, completely different characters. And I don't think that she was trying to make this the next, next best Evelyn Hugo. I feel like this was a completely different book. And I feel like the things that were dealt with in this book were way, way more complex. 
the MC, I was not a fan of her. I did not like her, okay? But I just appreciated her character. Like, I appreciated the journey. If she was my, in my life, I would be running for the door, okay? Like, nobody got time for her shenanigans. The entire love story of this book had me, I cried again. <laughs> How many times am I gonna say I cried in this video? But okay, I cried again, who's surprised? Nobody's surprised. Pool of love within this book and them not being able to be together. <sighs> the quotes in this book were just like, so great. It just was phenomenal, absolutely amazing. Was it worth the hype? Yes, I gave this book five stars, baby. Five stars, I got three books left. I think I'm, this video is gonna be very long, so I apologize. The next book that I'm gonna talk about is In an Absent Dream, and this book follows the MC Lundy, who is pretty much the most adult version of a child ever. She absolutely loves structure and rules and doing like what the adults tell her to do, until she finds a door that leads into a different world and she does not follow the rules when it comes to that because she goes straight towards that door and it leads into the goblin market and it follows her journey of back and forth between the real world and the goblin market oh god <laughs> i've been wanting to talk about this book for so long but i already wrote a review on this book on goodreads so if you want to check that out i will leave it in the description box below it goes more into depth i hated this book okay i've read so many books by shannon mcguire her books are always short and so well done but this is the first book that i felt was short i felt like there was no plot. There was no plot. There was no storyline. I didn't know what the hell the point of this book was. Everything that was happening that was interesting in the book, we would just be told that it happened in a sentence. Like, there was an entire war between like her and some villain named like the Wasp Queen or something like that. They didn't show that. That was not shown at all in the book. Like, not even a scene. And just was told that there was a battle like passed over weren't talked about not mentioned we were just like summed up in one sentence the most of a journey that we got was like her walking around and her trying to figure out the rules of the goblin market and that's another thing the rules of the goblin market didn't make no damn sense okay i swear to god they had like these set rules that you were supposed to follow but they would change i swear <laughs> The structure of the rule system, none of it made sense. It was all about like perspective and like how do you see the rule and how do you view this and how do you think the world. I was so done with this damn book. I was ready for it to be over. The more rules that you break, the more things you don't do right, you turn to a bird. It, <laughs> it just, oh my god, I hated this book so much. I, I have not felt this much hate for a book in a very long time and then you had her mentor who was supposed to be advising her and like how to navigate through the goblin market and how to be you know successful without turning into one of these creatures by doing things she wasn't supposed to do and she just felt all, like a knockoff version of Dumbledore she was not guiding this girl at all she was not telling her how to do anything that girl was lost as hell the explanations of the goblin market were just like non-existent they didn't explain the colors the way anything looked there was no depths of like where are we if i had to draw a picture of what the hell this setting of this book was i wouldn't be able to tell you because i don't know where the hell what the hell was going on what was happening where she was it was just a mess was this book worth the hype absolutely not i gave this book two stars moving so on. the next book that i'm going to talk about is fixer up by tessa bailey so this book follows the mc named Georgie who is a clown like literally that's her job hey girl get your coin it's something that she loves to do but she feels stagnant in her job and she wants to grow and expand because she enjoys working at children's parties she enjoys working with kids but she wants to make it more into an entertainment business so she's trying to grow and expand her business and not feel stagnant then we also have our other MC Travis who also feels stagnant in his life because he was a professional baseball player and he ended up getting injured and now he has all this money and a whole bunch of boredom and nothing to do so he's trying to figure out what's next for him what he can do as far as like opportunities are and what his next job is going to be he needs Georgie's help he has to pretend that they're in a relationship so that he is seen as a good guy in the public eye so that he can get this damn job him and Georgie are obviously going to be set into the fake dating trope and that is what this book 
follows. I remember reading this book and I felt like I was loving it, but there were just small things that just kept chipping away at my happiness while reading this book. So initially when I started this book, I really liked the MC. I liked her a lot. She was really, <laughs> she was like aggravating as hell sometimes, but I just loved how driven she was for starting this business, how like caring she was, how honest she was. She was really cute and I liked her relationship with her family. I liked her relationship with other women. A person that was really big on like women empowerment and it wasn't like overdone. Travis, the more I think about him, the more I'm just like, why? He just felt like a caveman slash jock, like just like a mesh. He didn't have that much personality. You know, obviously he had to have the sad background story. His daddy don't like him. He got daddy issues. We all knew that was gonna happen. And then he had like this nickname, Two Bats, which was just like the corniest shit ever. It was like, okay, they mentioned it once. I was just like, hee hee, okay. But then they mentioned it over and over again. And I was like, why are we still, why are we still bringing up Two Bats? Like we, let's let that go. I thought it was a joke, but they just, it was a nickname. It just kept coming up. I hated the ending. The ending is what really chipped away at me. I just felt like, you know how you're getting, this is your, your first time reading a book and you're getting towards the end and you feel like you know what's about to happen and you're just hoping it doesn't happen. That's not what happened with this. Exactly what I did not want to happen, happened. And it was so rushed and over the damn top. Um, another thing I didn't like about this book was the kid sister trope brought up so much like we get it he kept seeing her as like kid sister type deal and it was like she's a grown-ass woman let it go she's not a baby then it just i just felt like they were trying to push this so hard like every conversation they had he would mention like you're my best friend's little sister like you're her you're his kid sister the only thing that i liked as far as that trope is concerned is the fact that she stood up to her family because they were treating her like a child i liked that i liked when that was brought up because it's like girl you grown you better take the rings and let them know that you're an adult another thing that i did not like as much as i liked the character georgie i did not like the fact that she has been idolizing him since they were like teenagers she went to all his games bought all his jerseys and she was like obsessive like with him like how you idolize someone there was no point in the book where she told him that she idolized him and fantasized him and i was like we're just gonna skip over that whole little detail okay we're gonna skip over the whole detail that's fine it sounds like i hated this book but i really didn't i, I liked small parts of it the the sex scenes were like missionary and vanilla and boring as hell but you know you get what you get but for the most part the book it was okay there were just like parts that were cringy every time i felt aggravated with the characters i just felt that rating going down do i think it was worth the hype no i would still recommend the book to someone because i feel like it depends on what kind of reader they are like i feel like some people could still enjoy this so i'm not gonna say don't read it but it was not worth all the hype that it got i gave it three stars moving on this is the last book of this damn video. Thank you, Jesus. I've been filming for like an hour. The last book that I'm going to talk about is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This book follows the MC Chloe who has a near-death experience and it makes her question her entire life and she starts realizing that her life is very boring, okay? So she comes up with a list of things that she wants to start checking off to make her life more interesting and feel like if she died today, she lived her best life. Her superintendent read she hates his ass, okay? She does not like him. She ends up giving him a business offer to have him check off some things on the list and she gives him a business proposition to help him start a website because that is what her job entitles. I liked both of these characters. The only thing I the only problem that I had with Chloe is I felt like she was very stuffy. Girl unclenched the other mc read i really really liked i liked his backstory i liked the depths of abuse that was um discussed i liked the fact that therapy was added into here i liked the fact that he was an artist i think i got like 30 percent in and then i rest i let i listened to the rest of it on audio the audiobook tainted i don't know if that's the right word but we're gonna go with it tainted my views on the story and then it made me question like if i read it physically if the things that i didn't like wouldn't have been a problem my brain started to shut down <laughs> okay i felt like the pacing of this book was really really well done halfway through 
I felt like towards the end there were a lot of unnecessary like situations that arise and arguments that were like quick to happen and slow to get solved. The further along this book got, the more I felt like it was a fling. It felt like a fling more than a romance. Situations would happen where it just felt like it was like splattered on the page. Sex scenes were chef kiss. I enjoyed the book. I'm not, <laughs> I know it sounds like I really didn't like it, but I enjoyed the book for the most part. So I feel like this book was worth the hype. I think that this author has a lot of potential. She's going to be a phenomenal writer. I'm excited to see what she does next. And I gave this book 3.5 stars. Okay, so that is it for this video. If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you God for surviving, all right? Let me know if you read any of these books and how you felt about them. But thank you guys so much for watching. Always remember, read a book, keep your life interesting, and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.